What's up? It's me, Pajama Cat. Welcome to the video. I'm happy to have you here. So this is a reading vlog. I don't do them very often. The reason for that is because of the outcome of them usually. This video is a actual dumpster fire. Maybe I've made it better with my editing. Maybe I have not. I don't know. Be gentle with me. <laughs> I tried. Why I'm telling you this is because now current me is going to be jumping in a lot to help out past me tell you what occurred because it's not coherent without that. So, um, welcome to the Backlist Readathon vlog. The Backlist Readathon was created and hosted by a whole bunch of lovely booktubers. I will link all of them down below. And, um, I had a blast. I also had a very successful time. If you saw the title of this video, you'll know that I read my first five-star book of the year in this readathon, which is exciting, exciting, exciting. I hope you enjoy this video. Let us begin now. Oh, hey, it's me again. Happy Monday from the past. What did I do on Monday? I went to class. What did I read on Monday? Half of your house is on fire, your children all gone. What did I vlog on Monday? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> to give you some thoughts, some preliminary thoughts that I know that I had on Monday while I was reading the book that I was reading, I found Your House is on Fire, Your Children All Gone, which is a German horror novel about a creepy little town on the Devil's Moor full of creepy little children and creepy big adults to be very, very creepy. I remember thinking to myself, self, this book is everything that I wanted from We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. So if you're someone who, like me, found that book to be underwhelming, I would recommend checking out this one. It may suit you better. And that was the end of Monday. Hello, it is Tuesday. I did not update you at all last night. Get ready for that to become a trend. However, I did finish Your House is on Fire, Your Children All Gone. I ended up giving it four stars. Parts of the ending were a little bit too open or unsatisfying for my taste, but overall, I really liked this. I definitely would recommend it. Last night, in between finishing Your House is on Fire and watching the newest episode of Good Girls, I also started my next book, which I decided was going to be Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. I have owned it for like two years. I need to read it. It's not an option anymore. It is a necessity because on the 18th, which is next Wednesday now, the show is dropping on Hulu and I want to have read the book before I see the TV series. I made it to page 22 before I got tired and decided to quit for the night. And uh, so far, I'm intrigued. I'm interested. I'm feeling it. Today, Tuesday, is one of my days off. I do have some homework to do, of course, but in between that and other things, I am going to be working my way through this. I shall update when I feel so inclined. Thank you for joining me for this segment of the video. Good day to you. Oh, okay. This is a family-friendly channel, ma'am. Put your butthole away. <laughs> Eleven fifty-seven on Tuesday. On Tuesday, I am finally stopping homework. I'm not getting anything done, so I decided to just stop and just read because at least I can be medium productive. I mean, this isn't the most productive thing I could be doing right now, but at least it's like I, I'm, I feel okay about it. Okay, I am going to continue reading Little Fires Everywhere until I inevitably succumb to the warm embrace of sleep. I, over the course of the day, made it to page 106, like a third of the way. So far, it is quite enjoyable. I'm having a very pleasant time. I'm definitely not like emotionally hit as hard as I was or as hard as I remember being when I read Everything I Never Told You. Should I get it? Hold on. Come here. 
Okay, in case you didn't know. I'm definitely not as gripped, I think is the word I would use, as I was when I read everything I ever told you. I don't know if it is just a story that appeals to me more, or if I was just a different reader back then, or something else. There could be a number of explanations. That being said, I'm still thoroughly enjoying this. Like, I'm having a great time. I'm having a, a, a friggin' blast. It's really nice to be reading Celeste Ng's writing again. I really think she has a very accessible writing style, but it's also just very good. It is just a delight to read. I'm also quite enjoying the story. We're starting to kind of get into the mystery part of it, which I always like. Her books are kind of like literary mysteries. I'm realizing now as I say all of this, I didn't actually tell you what this book was about when I held it up earlier. Let me come closer. So this is set in Shaker Heights, Ohio, which is a very kind of neat and tidy suburb, and um, it follows two families, I guess, one of them being the Richardsons, who are longtime residents of Shaker Heights. They're basically your picture-perfect family, or so it seems, and then the other family is a mother and daughter named Mia and Pearl, who move in at kind of like the beginning point of this book. Hello? What was I saying? Oh, Mia and Pearl move in, and they are not your typical family. Mia is an artist and she does odd jobs to support herself and her daughter. Pearl is kind of odd but wants to be more of like a normal teen and so at the point where I'm at it's kind of come to the point where Mia and Pearl have each respectively assimilated in their own way to Shaker Heights and they have kind of carved out a space for themselves. I think I don't know what I'm trying to say. I think I don't know what I'm trying to say, so I'm just gonna shut up because I'm trying to <laughs> say something and I don't know what it is. I'm gonna go read this. I have no idea how far I'll make it. Only time will tell, and, uh, but I will try to let you know what happens before I fall asleep. I have school in six hours and I can't sleep because I can't stop thinking about the book I'm reading. <sighs> this is great, this is good. Ayo! Didn't film much on Wednesday either. Had to go to class again. I tried to film a cute little, like, I'm reading clip. Didn't go well. However, comma, while I was on campus, I did finish Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. I'm in a bathroom and I'm kind of scared that someone's gonna come in, but I finished and I wanted to tell you this was so good. Oh my god. Celeste Ng, I love you. Love success. To give you some final thoughts about that book, I gave it four stars. I really enjoyed it. It was a thoroughly, thoroughly just fun experience. I think that out of all of the literary fiction that I have currently read in my life, Celeste Ng's books are probably the most accessible and engaging, so if you're somebody who's looking for an adult book but you don't know where to start, I would highly recommend starting with either of her books. Either one is good, whatever one sounds more interesting to you. Personally, I did decide that I liked everything I never told you better, but Little Fires of Her is still really fucking good. Uh, my one qualm with this book, and the one reason why I think I gave it four stars rather than five is that there is a little bit of a lag at the beginning for me because Celeste Ng takes the time, probably about 100 pages of time, to build the Shaker Heights suburb setting and really make it clear how much it relies on conformity and rigidity and not being different. As somebody who has lived in suburbs for most all of her life, I am already very familiar with that idea, and so it wasn't boring, but there was a point where I was like, huh, where's the actual story that's like given in the synopsis on the flap on the front cover, you know? Not bad, just took a minute. Once we got to the actual plot line though, my god, I was obsessed! I was obsessed. On Thursday I had to wiggle my way around campus for most of the day, but I did start my next book which was an audiobook of Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. My first Gillian Flynn book, What What? Ooh. I've left school and I decided to go to the thrift store to look for books because it's been a long day. I can't stay too long because I have to go study for my exam tomorrow, but I wanted to come take a moment, take a breather. I am listening to the audiobook for Sharp Objects. So far it's pretty gnarly. So that's what's happening. Okay. <laughs>
Hello, I'm home. Uh, I found one thing that I wanted to purchase and that is a pretty nice copy of, there's a school bus going by, Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. I did read this last year. I really enjoyed it. Um, but I have been kind of like toying with the idea of buying my own copy to reread because I read an e-arc. And so I found this for a hot $2.99 and I'm excited about it. But instead of reading that right now, unfortunately, I get the intense pleasure of reading Medieval Art, the second edition, uh, chapter four? This will count as a backlist book. There's a lot of backlist shit happening in here. Medieval, not current. Um, so yeah, that'll be my literary companion for the next I don't know how many hours. I shall return to you when I am done with that and can continue on with Sharp Objects because I really want to read Sharp Objects. Okay. <laughs> it's uh thursday still obviously it is 10 40 you can't see that instead of studying i'm gonna hide my face in shame while i say this i fell asleep oh i won't lie i have less than zero motivation to study for this exam the good news is i have a hundred percent motivation to read sharp objects. Please don't yell at me in the comments. Also, don't let me influence your decisions. Study hard, kids. Oh my God. The even better news is I do have a two hour break tomorrow in between my 9 a.m. and my noon class. The noon class being art history, being the class that I have the exam in. So I have two whole hours, which I will take advantage of because I'm sure that by the time I wake up in the morning the crushing anxiety of the fact that I may possibly fail is going to just be crippling. So that's exciting. So if I read Sharp Objects, which I will be doing because I'm really into it, and I maybe even finish Sharp Objects? How far am I? Hang on, let's find out. 40%. I feel like maybe I can finish Sharp Objects tonight and then tomorrow I will not bring a book with me to campus. I will be good and then I'll do my classes and in my break I will study hard and succeed on this exam. Is this wishful thinking? Yeah. Do I care? No. Because after this day, tomorrow, after tomorrow day, I'll be free for two weeks and I will not check my grades because ignorance is bliss. Nobody can touch me. I'm home free. That's the plan. Thank you for being privy to it. I'm gonna go read my book now because it's all I care about. Um, okay, it's, what time is it? I actually don't know, 11.50, so about an hour. And uh, I just wanted to say I'm on page 130 of Sharp Objects now, going strong, still very into it. I just wanted to stop in and say how much I'm enjoying this, first of all. It's weird and dark and the perfect kind of thriller for me. I do love a good serial killer. I also am incredibly interested by our main character and even more specifically, the say it with me now family dynamics. Uh, of her and her mom. I think that Jillian Flynn, have I been saying it wrong this whole time? How to pronounce the author's name who wrote Gone Girl. I found this on the web. I just realized literally like five seconds ago it might be Jillian and not Gillian because I'm intelligent. I'm Gillian Flynn. Oh! Suck it! I was right. Okay, never mind. I think that Gillian Flynn is doing a bang-up job of weaving this mystery plot line in with just like the southern mom like family thing that she's got going on. I'm sure they're going to kind of like intersect and become even more intertwined as the book goes on. Like I have that feeling, I get that vibe from this, but I'm just so, oh, I like this so much. I really like this. At this point, she's a, she's a four. I am on such a streak. It's been so long since I've had such a like solid list of books that I've read in a row. Like it's been a, it's been a minute. I have a little under halfway left. That's all. Okay. <laughs> Bye. I should tell you, I got so into sharp objects that the next portion of the video is really just me making theories while I read and getting like overly excited about it. It's nothing spoilery because I didn't know. I don't say any spoilers, but if you don't want to have any influence to your experience, then I would skip to this time here. <clears throat> um, this fucking mom can choke. Also, have I made my guess on who's done it? I'm at like 60%. I better make a guess soon. I think, mm, damn, you know, I want to say it's Amma, Amma, however you say that. 
Uh, however, comma, I feel like that's too easy. She's a creepy little girl. That's where your mind first goes. Alan's just kind of there. Usually when I read thrillers, the person who's like there but non-essential is who does it. So he's definitely a contender. It's not the kid, John, or the other one who saw the lady in the park. That doesn't make any sense at all. They're just witnesses and or sources of info. Richard, you know, mm, damn. no, I don't think it's Richard. That doesn't make any sense either because he came from Kansas after the murders. All of this I'm saying is going to make sense to none of you if you haven't read this. I'm sorry, but I'm just trying to think out loud and I also want to make my guess on camera so that if slash and or when I'm correct, I have proof. My current number one guess I think is the mom because she's just, she's, she's lost her marbles. She's got nothing up in there. Ooh, girl. Okay. I decided I don't think that the killer can be this mom because she's just the fucking worst. Like she is the worst, which means that it would be too obvious for her to be the one who's killing these girls because she's the actual fucking death. Like what is her issue? Literally a uh, big Carol last energy coming from whatever the fuck this woman's name is because it literally wouldn't make sense for her to be the killer because she's so shitty. And therefore, if I'm wrong, I'm gonna eat ass. But like, oh, that does not make sense. Um, I, ooh, what a bitch. My window's open. I hope someone's outside and can hear all of this. Have a good night, I love you. Okay, um, anyway, back to what I was doing. I didn't finish. It was like 2 a.m. when I quit and I don't know. <laughs> It is Friday, uh, still, March 13th. Happy Friday the 13th, oh my god. I think it was Friday the 13th when I did my little life vlog too. Wow, we're just destined to be together every Friday the 13th. Love you. Anyway, um, it is 10, 10 p.m. I went to school today. It was my last day of classes on campus. It was a very weird day, I won't lie, it was very odd. I then came home and passed out on my bed for a solid three hours. I have now pajamaed myself and I'm ready to read again. I fell asleep last night. I don't know if I actually told you where I fell asleep. I ended up stopping last night on page, about page 170. I think I tried to go further than that, but I didn't make it. That's chapter 12. Um, and I have approximately, if I can look without getting spoiled for anything, what is that, 252, so. 50, 30, 80? 80 pages left? Is that that? We're gonna go with 80 pages left. So I'm going to now read the last 80 pages of Sharp Objects. I will tell you about it when it is happened. Okay. Good day. <laughs> night. It's night. Shut up. Okay. Okay, so I called something. <laughs> and I can't tell you what it is, but I was right. I was correct. I'm a genius. I may have to take back what I said about this mother not being the killer be I can't, can I say that? Is that a spoiler? I don't know who the killer is. I don't know yet. That could be, that could be, that's not a spoiler. All I'm saying is I hate her, but I also hate the kid now too, Emma. She's also the worst. Camille is not the best. Where's Alan? Anyway, I was right. I just wanted you to know that. I'm smart. I have brain cells. Sometimes. Okay, good talk. Okay, let's finish this bitch. <gasps> no, ew, oh my God. That was good. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. Damn. 
Sharp objects, book three, done, boom. I ended up giving this five stars. I think this is the first thriller in a long time that I've given a five out of five right off the bat. Actually, I didn't even give it five out of five right off the bat. I initially gave it four stars, but I couldn't stop thinking about it. And so I decided to scooch it up because Oh, it was, it was a beautiful blend of everything that I love. It had serial killers, it had southern gothic vibes, it had a big like whodunit plot, which is my favorite because I always obviously love to guess. Also, the writing was incredible. Usually when I read thrillers, I don't pay attention to writing because usually when I read thrillers, the writing isn't always the best, which is fine because I'm not there for beautiful writing, I'm there for a compelling plot. But Gillian Flynn did that. She did that. On Saturday, I read nothing and I did nothing except for go to the library to try and get some homework done because at that time it was still open. Uh, and I met up with my friend, my good buddy, Sarah. You remember Sarah. <laughs> I tried to get a nice clip of me like doing homework. How to YouTube. How to YouTube? I'll tell you. Wing it. Yeah. Clearly it was a very productive situation. You know what I noticed on the Greyhound? What? The Dennis is being swifty. What? <laughs> Did you say Dennis is penis with a D? At this point in the week, I was 90% convinced that this vlog was hot garbage and I was almost 100% convinced that I wasn't going to post it. Proved you wrong, past cat, you little bitch. Anyway, I didn't film anything today, but I did read stuff. So a quick wrap up on what I read. Firstly, I started my day off by reading The Grown Up by Gillian Flynn. Oh my God, am I obsessed now? No comment, it's fine. It's okay. Now is not the time to shy away from our obsessions. We gotta lean into that shit. Healthy coping mechanisms for the win, am I right? I'm right. So The Grown Up is a short story that Gillian Flynn wrote for a larger collection. It's a haunted house story. And that's all I really wanna tell you because it's 64 pages. Like I feel like any information is too much information in this case. So just know I gave it three stars. I really loved the atmosphere. Again, the writing was great. I always find her plot lines compelling. The thing that kind of knocked this book down for me was that I just think it was too short. Like there was not enough time to develop the characters the way that she did in Sharp Objects. There wasn't enough time to develop the plot line the way that she did in Sharp Objects. There were multiple plot twists throughout the story and because it was so short, they just weren't as like satisfying, I guess, because they just came one after the other and it was like, I got whiplash. Uh, I gave it three stars. I think it's still worth a read if you can get your hands on a copy, but it's not Sharp Objects. What is? But anyway, I also read Moonstruck Volume 1, Magic to Brew, which is a graphic novel, first in a series. I really, really love the art style of this. It's very soft and pastel and just very cute. It follows a group of magical beings, werewolves, centaurs, vampires, seers, etc., who all live in this college town and they just get into these hijinks. Yeah, I gave it four stars. I really liked it. I definitely am gonna continue with the series. Lastly, on this day, Sunday, I started my next book, did not finish it, wasn't planning to finish it. At this point, I was kind of like giving up on the readathon thing, but I was still reading because what else did I have to do? So I started my next book. I'm gonna be mean and make you wait until my wrap up because technically I didn't finish it for the readathon. And so I began Dark Places by Killian Flynn. <laughs> It's fine. How far did I make it? Great question. Couldn't tell you, have no idea. I'll tell you I gave it three stars. All of my thoughts though, they can wait. And that was Sunday. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I don't have an outro, but I'm done talking. Okay, bye.